morning. Good morning. We're, we're both sick up here. Oh, no. And we're missing Nancy, and we're missing Peter. So we need your help. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. sitting with somebody you don't know that person's name and you don't want to ask, you can look on this. <laughs> but you could just ask. <laughs> also, if you have a, a joy or a concern that you'd like to share with the congregation and have lifted in prayer, you can fill out one of these uh, rectangular cards you see in front of you in the pew. Around the time of the children's moment, I'll try to remember uh, to... Um, ask you to hold those up and then one of the ushers will collect them and uh, bring them forward. Uh, also with regard to this, um, 
I do not have our current joys and concerns list in front of me, so if there's something you want to make sure gets said, but you know, you've turned something in in the past, um, don't depend on it ha just happening. Fill out our cards. <laughs> Are there any special announcements? None, wow, that's unusual. Um, so now there is a, a trip planned to the uh, Lighthouse Theater in Redlands on January 26th. Um, and, and that's to see a, a play called Women Warriors, uh, Amazing Women in History. And then um, I want to say uh, thank you uh, for our breakfast. Uh, Gary and Diane Porch, Mike McGinnis, and uh, Al and Joanne Barnard uh, uh, prepared breakfast for us. So thank you to all of them for, uh, for their, their hospitality. Uh, reminder that we have a uh, deacon meeting following the worship service at, at 11.30 and then at 1 o'clock we have a session meeting, our, our Board of Elders meets. Um, so a little disclaimer for the service, I had hernia surgery on Wednesday. So if, um, if anything's just not right, <laughs> please cut me a little slack. Um, it's, uh, anesthesia brain or, or whatever. Um, but uh, anyway, it's good to be here and uh, be with you. Um, let's see. And all of that said then, uh, let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
coast lands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord <coughs> called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he made me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it's too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you a light to the nations, and my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slaves of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you.
confess our sins to God, for the Holy One is steadfast in love and always ready to forgive. Let us pray. Lord our God, we have chased after foolish things and spent our strength on vanity, but our labor has been in vain. Let us now take a moment of silence to confess our sins. Deliver us from arrogance and forgive our self-concern, that we may find our reward with you as servants of your dream. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, you are forgiven in Christ, the Lamb who bears our sin. Happy are those who put their trust in God and delight to do God's will. For God makes our footing sure upon the rock of Christ. And let us stand and share that forgiveness, blessing and glory of God. stash of offering. Oh, oh, here it is. So, um, 
what I want to invite you to do is always think about coming to church as coming and seeing and learning about God's love for you and for all those people and for everybody in the world. All right? Come and see. Well, let's tell them come and see. Can you say it? One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Come and see. Now, we're going to get them to invite us to come and see. And we'll just listen. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Come and see. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the, invi the invitation to come and see. To see Jesus, to see your love in him, and to know the ways in which you show us uh, grace and show us love uh, as we gather together. All this we pray in Jesus' name. And we pray the prayer you taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, everybody. If you have a Joys and Concerns card, you can hold that up and one of the ushers will collect those and bring them forward. As we turn to the scriptures, let us turn to God in prayer using the prayer for illumination that is uh, printed and projected to, help, to uh, ask God uh, for help and understanding. Come, Holy Spirit, Heavenly God, open our ears to the truth of your word, that the testimony of Christ may be strengthened among us and the glad news of deliverance revealed. Amen. For well, our scripture reading uh, comes from uh, the Gospel according to John. And, uh, but this is an account of John, not the one who has his name on the Gospel, but the one that we uh, generally refer to as uh, John uh, the, the Baptizer or John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. We uh, will hear in the sermon how perhaps he would be more likely in this gospel or more appropriately in this gospel to be called uh, God, or rather John the Testifier or the Witness. <coughs> The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, 
and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. Oh, there's another John. Uh, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which translated is Peter, which also means rock. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you see something, say something. Uh, I tra traveled uh, three times between, uh, between Thanksgiving and New Year's uh, to North Carolina. And so I spent time in the airports, and sometimes I would hear that saying, if you see something, say something. The expression was coined uh, by um, Alan Kay of, um, of Corey and Kay, the Corey and Kay Ad Agency on September the 12th, 2001. In order to help avert a, um, a disaster like it happened the day before. If you see something, say something. Our, in our text, we hear, in our text today, we see. John uh, the Baptist, or traditionally called John the Baptist, or the baptizer. And we, we, we hear that his calling is to see something and to say something. But, but instead of seeing something and then saying something in order to avert a disaster or some calamity or, 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 or crisis, it is to see something and then say something in order to illumine the grace and the love of God. Now, John, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospels, it is called John the Baptist or John the Baptizer, and it's his job in those Gospels to, uh, to baptize the people of Judea who are coming to him in preparation for the coming of Jesus. And it's his job when Jesus comes along to baptize Jesus. And that prepare, then prepares Jesus for for his ministry as it begins. But it's a little different in 
the fourth gospel, in John's gospel. In John's gospel, he does indeed baptize, and that's part of his work, but that's not his real role. <laughs> his real role is to testify, to bear witness. And so it it works a little differently in John's gospel. It looks like this. God has said, okay, John, you are going, um, you are my witness and you are going to baptize and you're just going to start baptizing people and then all of a sudden, you're going to baptize somebody whom you don't know and you don't realize there's anything special about him but all of a sudden, when you baptize him, it's as if the heavens are open and you're going to see the Spirit descend upon him, the Holy Spirit descend upon him and stay on him. And you will know that he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> And so, yeah, that's the calling. And when that happens, and John sees that, rather than like Matthew, Mark, and Luke, his work being pretty much over, it's now just starting. Because his real God, job is to see something and say something. To see the grace and love the revelation of God's very self coming into the world and say something and say, here's the Lamb of God. Here's the Son of God. Here's the one who came before me and therefore is greater than me, even though he's come after me. He sees something and then he says something. And in a very real way, that's our calling. As disciples who then follow Jesus and are, are, are called to come and see. And then when we see the grace of God, see the love of God, to say something. I, I mentioned that I had hernia surgery on Wednesday. Well, uh, that is indeed the case. But on Tuesday, I was in a class in uh, Los Angeles, and as we were waiting for the class to begin, I happened to mention that I was having hernia surgery the next day. And the, the teacher said, uh, you know, I had a hernia surgery, had a hernia uh, a few years ago, and uh, it was bilateral, it was like mine of both sides. And he, he said, uh, and I didn't have any insurance. So I started researching uh, to, to figure out how to have the, uh, have the operation uh, uh, the most cost effectively I could. And I finally found somebody who had, a, um, who had his own practice and had his own little surgery center and I could have the surgery for $3,000. That included everything including the anesthesiologist, etc. He said, but it still was going to be a big hit to me. And he said, but I was teaching a class at the time, and I told the class about what was going on. And the next day, one of the members of the class heard on the radio a promotion for, uh, for one of the local uh, research facilities that was doing research about hernia surgery. And she called the school, uh, our school, to, to have word sent to me that this was going on. And not only were they having people uh, do the, the, the research, uh, and they weren't going to charge them, they were going to give them $500. <laughs> and he said, so I did it. And I thought, well, man, he was $3,500 to the good. <laughs> That's great. I also thought, wow, 
somebody was looking out for you. Somebody was working to provide for you. Yep, I saw something. But you know what? I didn't say something. I, I, I don't know why exactly. Um, maybe I just didn't want, I didn't want him to, to, to um, uh, think I was kind of crazy. Because I, I, I think maybe he wasn't able to see that same thing. Um, or maybe, you know, sometimes I see something and I don't say something because I know there are other times those some things don't happen and I wrestle with why God does something, there's some expression of grace or love that's kind of powerful in one place, but not in another. And so, in some ways, I don't trust my own spirit sorting that out because, well, do, you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I suspect there, there are a lot of times also that many of us see something, but don't then say something. When saying something would not only glorify God, but maybe help someone else to say it. And it can be said in tender and hopeful and not crazy ways. <laughs> if you see something, say something. And it's hard to say something. You know, for, for, for some of those reasons. But, but what I hear from this story uh, about John and, and Jesus and, and the disciples is not an imperative like we have in order to avert uh, disasters. Well, there is an imperative, but there's also this indicative of grace, this empowerment. And it's more like we were in the sermon title. If you see something, you can say something. When we see God's glory, when we see that grace upon grace, when we see that love of God, that revelation of God at work in the world. The Jesus who has invited us to come and see has also baptized us with the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit empowers us to say something. It's not when you see something, you say something. It's when we see something, we can say something. And the further glory is that when we see something, we finally do indeed say something. Because what is at stake is the glory of God. And a world that God so loves, being able to celebrate God's grace and God's goodness and God's love, God's self-giving revelation of, of who God is to you and me and this whole world that God loves. That, that's what's at stake. And as we see, some, see that grace upon grace, as we see that glory, as we see that love, and we say something and we point to it, we are further participating in it. And being a part of that something that others can see or hear or touch or smell or taste or experience. As God says to John the Baptist, God kind of in essence says to us, you're going to be going through your ordinary work. 
And then all of a sudden, something's going to happen. You see something. And you're what you're going to be able to do? You're going to be able to say something. Because that's who you are. N not only because you're a human being, you know, we all, we're always seeing things, things that happen in our lives and then saying something about it and telling, you know, just kind of ordinary things and te telling stories of, around the water cooler or around breakfast or, or whatever. But it's also who we are as those disciples who have heard and answered the call to come, come and see. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us stand and <coughs> sing of the God who calls us to come just as we are, to come and see and be transformed by the very revelation of God in Jesus. Oh, 
out uh, to the homeless uh, yesterday. Uh, I'll, I'll have to say it was a kind of, for them, a, a disappointing uh, outreach because there was a little response. But um, I, I want to say that any efforts in, in that direction are <coughs> something that is seen and that can be spoken. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you are the one who reveals yourself to us in efforts of outreach and those coincidences that our faith causes us to consider not so coincidental. In those uh, events of grace and love for any Thing good that happens, O oh God, is the work of your Spirit. We lift to you, O oh God, uh, those about whom we are concerned. We, we indeed pray for the most vulnerable um, who seem to be the homeless among us. And we lift up the, um, the homeless count this coming Thursday and uh, pray for um, the ways in which you may work blessing through it and through uh, the efforts of, uh, of yesterday. We uh, lift up uh, others about whom we are concerned. We pray for Linda Miller as she uh, struggles with uh, various things. And we pray, oh God, for uh, Jean Weddenfield as uh, she uh, struggles with, with colon cancer. We lift up um, Carrie Walsh as she, uh, as she um, grieves the loss of her mother. We lift up uh, the Mwangi uh, Muni family, uh, uh, Wakaba, uh, as uh, they all uh, grieve the loss of Wakaba's uh, brother Jesse, and, uh, and um, have the um, the experience of being a, a day out from his memorial service. We pray, O oh God, that you will be with us as a congregation. We thank you for the ways in which uh, our actions, as well as our words, can point to you ways in which we can say, come and see, the ways in which we hear the words, come and see, and indeed the heavens are open and we see your spirit descending upon Jesus. 
and we hear Jesus inviting us to be a part of what he is doing and being and living and ministering in this world. Encourage us with your grace and with your love and delight us with um, all the ways that you manifest your grace upon grace that we may say glory and know the depth of your love uh, for each of us and for this world. All these things we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, who is our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for our closing song of praise.
Oh, it's they're at those 